Oh, thanks so much for having me, Kristen. I want to start off with recent comments by the now ousted Speaker of the House, Kevin McCarthy, who said just yesterday, the fact that the House of Representatives is leaderless at this important moment, he says, quote, why would you ever remove a speaker during a term and, quote, raise a doubt around the world? Did your actions this week to remove the speaker undermine U.S. national security and safety? Well, I don't think that other countries think about Kevin McCarthy's speakership quite as much as Kevin McCarthy does. We'll have a new speaker next week and we'll be prepared to do our work. Kevin McCarthy was removed because he made multiple contradictory promises to people that ultimately could not be reconciled. The Democrats didn't trust him. House Republicans on the conservative side of our caucus didn't trust him. And that ultimately led to us making a decision to move forward with someone new. Fortunately, we've got two great men running for speaker, Jim Jordan and Steve Scalise. I reject the premise that this is going to drag on for weeks. Uh, my colleague Kevin Hearn was contemplating a run, but I received a message from him recently that he won't be mounting that campaign precisely because in a two-man race, it's going to be pretty clear who gets the most votes. I do want to say, based on what's going on in Israel right now, it is horrifying. We stand with the people of Israel. Israel has a right to defend itself. I get the sense that Israel is going to be larger, not smaller, at the end of this conflict. And it, we have to take note that every place, whether it's Gaza, or Judea and Samaria, where Israel has given back territory, life has gotten worse for the people who live in those places. And I think Israel's actions right now are justified, though we certainly hope that the carnage and the death comes to an end as soon as possible. Congressman, you say that you stand with Israel, you're ready to defend Israel, and yet you're completely incapable of helping Israel because you've brought Congress to a standstill, a state of paralysis, have you not? Uh, well, you just heard the Secretary of State reject that premise. We have a 10-year ongoing memorandum of understanding that he sends... He didn't reject Israel it, Congressman. He, he called on, Congress on, to get back to work. Hold on. Let me let me get a word in here, Kristen. Yeah, yeah, but what he said was there was no need in Israel that we're not going to be able to meet based on the funding that we've already approved for Israel. And the reason we have this multi-billion dollar commitment each and every year to Israel is because we want Israel to have a qualitative military edge over everyone in the reason. They have that edge. Israel has air superiority now. Uh, we are we are seeing their armored vehicles in the north. I'm very concerned about what Hezbollah might do, what Lebanon might do there to try to create more, more instability. But there is no ask from Israel that we are unable to meet because it's going to take us a few days to pick a new speaker. I, I was very critical of the pro Tem's decision to send us home for a week. I thought upon McCarthy's ouster, we should have stayed on the job, stayed in Washington. And if if McHenry had not made that decision, we would have a speaker right now. Uh, he made one that was regrettable, but I think we're going to be back on track quite soon.